A note to viewers, this episode is going to be dealing with topics that may not be suitable for younger audiences as we're going to be discussing malicious politics and social systems. The language won't be harsh, but the topics may be construed as such. Please be advised. Gamers on Games is sponsored in part by... Hey viewers, Dave here for Snappy Turtle Comics and Gallery. Snappy Turtle Gallery is your go-to destination for geeky, nerdy prints, and each is just $5. With over 600 prints and growing, you're sure to find something you'll love. Go to SnappyTurtleGallery.com today and get yours. I'm Lynn from Metalhead Minis. Great to meet you. Uh, be sure to check us out online at MetalheadMinis.com. You can find out more about our services, such as miniature painting. We also do consignment. We also teach at local game stores. Be sure to check us out at MetalheadMinis.com. Thanks for having me. by viewers like you. So before we get into the heart of the episode, I have been advised to define fascism as it will be at the core of this episode's topic. I'm going to go through the points of fascism and show how they relate to Warhammer 40K's Imperium of Man. So, how fascism works. Fascism is a cult of the leader promising restoration. Think about the origins of the emperor of mankind and the subsequent religion that came about centered on him. So, this is a big check. Fascism has a bedrock in ultranationalism. This, again, is a very big check for the Imperium of Man. The best example of this is the genocidal xenophobia and willful slaughter of its own citizens for a multitude of reasons. Blasphemy, suspected blasphemy, or treason, or having contact with the enemy. Not meeting quotas. Yeah, that's a check. Propaganda. Oh yeah, the Imperium has that going on. Look at the assorted posters you can print up for your terrain, and a lot of them have a 1930s and 1940s vibe to them. Anti-intellectualism. Again, another hallmark of the Imperium, as you see prohibition of researching artifacts and technology not of human origin. Though you do see instances of discrepancy here, most notably Commissar Yarrick's Power Claw. There is also an indoctrination regimen, set upon the citizenry of the Imperium. If you play the Space Marine video game, you'll actually hear the announcements over the PA system. Unreality, or living in a system of lies. This is definitely an aspect of the Imperium. This goes hand in hand with the propaganda and anti-intellectualism. When you eliminate alternative viewpoints and reinforce the adherence to a strict dogma, distorting reality is easy. Hierarchy, like I even need to expand on this. Look at the structure of the hive cities. The underhive is effectively the slums, and the higher up you go, the more your status and station increases, with the ultra rich and powerful in the highest spires. The strict enforcement of law and order. This is another big check for the Imperium of Man. Citizen social mobility is rather a null point, and stepping out of line is met with extremely harsh repercussions. The Imperium does not tolerate disobedience, uprising, or not meeting expectations. The culmination of these points to serve against an existential threat, that makes for a fascist system. So it's happened before, and it's happening again. But why are people acting so surprised? The presence of Nazis, fascists, and white supremacists in the Warhammer sphere shouldn't be coming as a surprise to anyone at this point. But before we get into it, let's have a flashback to July 6th, 2020, when Games Workshop published a statement back then about hate in their fandom. So back then they published a statement which reads as follows, Warhammer is for everyone. Warhammer is for everyone. One of the great powers of our hobby is its ability to bring people together in a common cause, to build bonds and friendships that cross divides. We believe in and support a community united by shared values of mutual kindness and respect. 
Our fantasy settings are grim and dark, but that is not a reflection of who we are or how we feel the real world should be. We will never accept nor condone any form of prejudice, hatred, or abuse in our company or in the Warhammer hobby. We will continue to diversify the cast of characters we portray through miniatures, art, and storytelling so everyone can find representation and heroes they can relate to. And if you feel the same way, wherever and whoever you are, we're glad to have you part of the Warhammer community. If not, you will not be missed. Very pretty language, but then why are they having to put out another statement saying the same thing this year only longer? So here's their public statement and buckle in because it's not only long, but they're really letting it rip. The Imperium is driven by hate. Warhammer is not. There are no goodies in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. None, especially not the Imperium of Man. Its numberless legions of soldiers and zealots bludgeon their way across the galaxy delivering death to anyone and anything that doesn't adhere to their blickered view of purity. Almost every man and woman toils in misery either on the battlefield where survival is measured in hours or in the countless manufactorums and hive slums that fuel the imperial war machine. All of this is slavish servitude to the living corpse of a god emperor whose commandments are at best only half remembered, twisted by time, and the fallibility of humanity. Warhammer 40,000 isn't just grimdark, it's the grimmest darkest. The Imperium of Man stands as a cautionary tale of what could happen should the very worst of humanity's lust for power and extreme, unyielding xenophobia set in. Like so many aspects of Warhammer 40k, the Imperium of Man is satirical. For clarity, satire is the use of humor, irony, or exaggeration, displaying people's vices or a system's flaws for scorn, derision, and ridicule. Something doesn't have to be wacky or laugh out loud funny to be satire. The derision is in the setting's amplification of a tyrannical genocidal regime turned up to 11. The Imperium is not an aspirational state. Outside of the in-universe perspectives of those who are slaves to its systems, it's a monstrous civilization and its monstrousness is plain for all to see. Now I want to break in here for a minute to point out that they believe the fascist element in the Warhammer community is so dumb, so ignorant, so uneducated that they have to literally explain satire in their public statement. In the statement, they break away from the message to literally give the definition of satire. Come on, that is just priceless. That is GW telling the fascists and Nazis in the hobby, listen, we realize you're stupid because you support discrimination and genocidal practices and that probably means you barely passed history and whatever other classes in school. So we're going to make sure you are crystal clear on what satire is. Come on, if that doesn't give you a giggle, I don't know what will. That said, let's keep going. That said, certain real world hate groups and the adherents of historical ideologies better left in the past, sometimes seek to claim intellectual properties for their own enjoyment and to co-opt them for their own agendas. We've said it before, but a reminder of what we believe in. We believe in and support a community united by shared values of mutual kindness and respect. Our fantasy settings are grim and dark, but that is not a reflection of who we are or how we feel the real world should be. We will never accept nor condone any form of prejudice, hatred, or abuse in our company or in the Warhammer hobby. If you come to a Games Workshop event or store and behave to the contrary, including wearing the symbols of real world hate groups, you will be asked to leave. We won't let you participate. We don't want your money. We don't want you in the Warhammer community. For those heroes out there running their own Warhammer events, we'd love for you to join us in this stance. Then they conclude this with what really comes down to a sales pitch from the marketing department because you can't put out a public statement 
about hate without making sure you pitch the product. But is this too little too late? So what prompted the latest round of Games Workshop Apologia? At the Talavera 40k tournament in Spain, a player calling himself Austrian Painter, quote unquote, showed up wearing Nazi and fascist symbols on his apparel and was not removed from the premises. Nope, instead he was allowed to play and as players complained and refused to play him, the judges allowed him to score with each forfeit. So effectively, the tournament organizers encouraged this mentally and emotionally distressing display by actively rewarding the player with ranking points every time someone refused to play him. Now, I think it's worth it to take a moment to address the fact that he called himself Austrian Painter for those looking to make an excuse for him, like maybe he was from Austria or wanted to show off that he paints miniatures. Context is key. Wearing fascist symbols? Check. Alluding to Adolf Hitler? Also check. Yeah, he wasn't being subtle. The fascist symbols were as follows. The arrows are the phalange, and I may be mispronouncing that and I apologize. The solar cross is the emblem of the 13th Panzer Division who committed war crimes against the Poles. I'm not going to list all of them as they are beyond grotesque and numerous as to require their own video. And the red shield with a Gamadian is a symbol widely used by neo-Nazi organizations. With all this going on, you have to ask yourself. The badges on our caps, have you looked at them? What? Have you noticed that our caps have actually got little pictures of skulls on them? I don't, so. Hands. Are we the baddies? From what I understand, the tournament organizers couldn't expel this person because the law prohibited them. Based on what I read, it seems Spain is okay with wearing Nazi regalia as long as no violence or crime is being committed. Removing this individual just for being inflammatory would have put them in the wrong and opened them up to legal action. This isn't the first time this week that I've seen the law be manipulated to serve the worst examples among the human race. But again, the tournament organizers were actively endorsing the display by giving Austrian Panner the points that come with a win for each forfeit. Well, what do you expect them to do? Some may be asking. My thought would be either A, not give the Austrian painter any points for the forfeit while not deducting points from the forfeiter. Or the more socially just thing to do is B, to assign full win points to the forfeiter the first time and assign the fascist no opponents for the rest of the tournament. Effectively, he becomes a null entity. He gains no points, so he'll be eliminated by the time the semifinals roll around, and the problem eliminates itself. Or the most obvious thing that would have eliminated the problem from the start, wearing fascist symbols is immediate disqualification from the tournament and ejection from the game space. Sadly, I didn't realize this particular instance even happened until I saw the statement from GW pop up on my Twitter feed. I've been seeing other people's reactions, and there seems to be a common thread of, if GW hadn't said something, I never would have known because there isn't a lot of focus on non-English speaking countries and the Warhammer fan base there. Considering I only speak English and bad English, I know I don't consume a lot of non-English content outside of TV, movies, or anime. I've also noticed that there has been considerable surprise that Spain has pro-fascism movements within their borders. To that, I recommend people take a look at the Spanish Civil War from 1936 till 1939. It sets up a lot regarding Spain's role during World War II and why it's no surprise that fascism has fertile soil there. I'm sure there are people exclaiming that this is another isolated incident and isn't representative of the larger whole or some such, but the problem is when People who hold these kind of views make the news, grab the headlines, and wind up causing firestorms online, they become the face of all of us. Don't forget that the Nazi presence in the Warhammer 40k community got so prevalent that a float of God Emperor Trump appeared in an Italian parade. Remember when I read the statement from GW last year that extolled Warhammer is for everyone? Remember the backlash post I included in that video that effectively boiled down to, if you don't like Nazis, then I'm out. Well, Warhammer isn't for everyone, while we have a Nazi presence amongst us. When Nazis can belly up to the table, we're all affected. 
because that is where the story starts. And by the time it gets around the community, it inevitably distorts and swells. And as that story grows, it brings those who agree with fascism out of the shadows. Fellow fascists who stayed silent for fear of being ostracized or being the only one come out in support and find their courage in numbers. And it'll grow from a trickle to a roar. And what happens from there? You lose diversity and inclusivity. People aren't going to generally be super eager to put themselves in potential harm's way if they know that the likelihood of encountering those who wish them harm is pretty good. If you already face discrimination in your daily life, why subject yourself to potentially more of it just for a hobby? Deplatforming works. Look how so many who've lost their outlets have lost their power. Heck, when was the last time any of us heard from Milo Yiannopoulos? Look how much harder the Vanity Manity has to try to reach an audience. Removing Nazis from the game space will work. Now, something in GW's statement I want to get back to. There are no goodies in the Warhammer 40k universe. None, especially not the Imperium of Man. And this is a fair enough statement, however, I think the satire of humanity's worst impulses, such as a lust for power and xenophobia, have been lost over time, especially as the Imperium is rather consistently portrayed as the good guys amongst all the playable options. To this, look at how the characters, and particularly the Astartes hero models, are portrayed. They are lionized ubermensch, and some are even depicted with laurel crowns. Roman symbols of triumph bestowed on military generals as recognition of victory. Also, look at their portrayals in past video games. Space Marine is a great example showing them as brave, bold, unstoppable soldiers. They are regarded as superior, almost deified beings amongst the Imperial Guard. This is something else you'll see in the descriptions and interactions with them throughout many novels in the Black Library. There's the appearance of the Inquisition at the end of Space Marine, showing how there is suspicion even amongst the most loyal. It is reminiscent of accounts from Germany and the Soviet Union during World War II, where people could be put under suspicion for being too loyal, which just blares caution at regimes sitting upon bayonets. But keep in mind, this is a footnote after level upon level of gruesome slaughter of waves of foes. Also consider how Space Marines are depicted in the marketing materials, especially the very prominent standees that are in the windows of almost every game store. And I don't think using almost every game store is even an exaggeration, as Games Workshop is one of the pillars that keeps the roof up for many stores. The other pillars, as I've had it repeatedly explained to me, include Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons, and board games. The standees depict an ultramarine in pristine blue armor with gold trim standing on what appears to be Xeno's corpses with his bolter ready. The colors, the pose, the overall depiction don't warn you of the fact that the space marines are actually part of a fascist theocracy. As an outsider, you don't get that warning. Heck, you won't even get that warning on the back of a starter set. Let me give you the blurb from the back of the Kill Team book. Quote, Countless worlds, infinite wars, just a handful of heroes. Unquote. Now, before I go further, note that quote is the big all caps font eye grabber. And one image is next to it the Space Marine with Bolter ready. Not seeing anything to warn a new player that Space Marines are fascists. Continuing on, quote, In the dark future of the 41st millennium, Empires clash to determine the fates of entire star systems amidst these titanic conflicts between million strong armies, hard bitten, bands of operatives, and desperate squads of would be saviors engage each other in vicious skirmishes as they undertake crucial assignments. A kill team of determined warriors with the right skills at the right place and time can turn the tide of star spanning campaigns. On through the fires of war, kill teams battle, rising to glory or else joining the endless lists of the fallen." Unquote. So please show me where the fascism is indicated to newcomers. I'm not seeing it. I see heroes, hard-bitten bands of operatives, would-be saviors, determined warriors with the right skills, rising to glory. All these are words of praise extolling virtue. Not really catching the satire here in the marketing materials. 
So that, combined with the fact that the Imperium of Man is going to be the most relatable faction in the game just by the nature of them being humans, when set against all Xenos races depicted in the 40k universe, isn't really helping the satire claim. Alright, that having been said, this isn't the first time GW's had problems with Nazis in the hobby, and it's actually been a long-standing issue. Back in 2010, there was an entire thread on Daka Daka about painting and converting Death Corps of Krieg models into Nazi representative models, with commenters giving plenty of advice about what to do and what not to do, and how best to get around the rules about offensive miniatures while still making sure everyone knows the models are still Nazis. This was in 2010. I'll put the link in the description section below so you can explore it if you have the interest. It's pretty twisted, so ready yourself. You are not your army. So this dovetails with a separate topic that I've wanted to cover for years. You are not your army. I've been trying to figure out how to cover it, and this is the best lead-in for that. It is an important topic, especially for historicals, where there's an outsider stigma that playing Germans in World War II or the South in Civil War games means you're a bad person. In terms of Warhammer, I've seen more than a few memes and message boards extolling this overblown machismo perspective that newbies play space marines, feminists and gays play tyranids, and cheap players play tap. And we mean cheap in a sense similarly used against people who camp in first-person shooters. But real men, they play chaos. Over the years, I've explained wargaming to people who either don't wargame or don't game at all and had to explain why people would choose to play the Germans in World War II games. Too often, the reaction I would get is, well, only Nazis would want to play Nazis. And I have to explain the various reasons people choose them. A good example was at Dexcon a few years ago. I was running quick Dust 1947 demos, and I got asked about it and explained it could be the playstyle, cost of miniatures, appreciation of the technology they had versus the Allies, etc. Having Germans doesn't make you a Nazi. A story I'm pretty sure I brought up in the past was from over 25 years ago, back when my friendly local game store, the Gamers Room, was still in its original primary location. My rabbi stopped in with Axis and Allies under his arm, and we played a pickup game of it. What really surprised me was that he actually insisted on playing Germany. I'm really hard-pressed to call a rabbi anti-Semitic. In a historical war game, someone needs to play the opposing side. As my co-host Rich said, quote, I personally would rather play the U.S. in all my military games. Dust 1947, I went with the Germans because they had zombies, and the Japanese had female ninjas. The US was actually the most boring faction in that game." Unquote. I do not disagree with that statement. People may choose the baddies for real world reasons, like it takes less models to play the same in-game point value. You'll see this particularly in World War II games, as the cost of putting a Panzer IV or a Tiger tank on the board is going to cost much more than putting on a Sherman. Heck, if you want to get into real world evaluations, American tanks were pretty inferior to German tanks, but we had more of them and had the material to keep producing them while Germany's resources waned. It became a numbers game, and more than a few World War II war games set their points to reflect this. People may also just prefer the way one faction plays over another. Heck, if you play Oryx, you're likely fielding them because they're the absolutely most random faction out there. There are guns that either do nothing, do extreme damage, or blow up in their own faces. And that's just called Tuesday. If we want to extrapolate this out further, playing Thanos or any villain in Marvel Crisis Protocol doesn't make you a bad person because the characters are thieves and murderers. Likewise, playing whatever faction or factions you choose in Warhammer doesn't mean squat about who you are, what your political or sexual identity or affiliations are. So while we are talking heavily and in-depth about how the Imperium of Man is a xenophobic fascist theocracy, we are not ascribing those terms to the players. I play Tyranids because I like playing zany weird bug creatures that consume everything like locusts. My six-year-old daughter likes playing Space Marines because they're cool and she painted them herself. 
When I announced I was working on this piece, these examples of Nazi-themed space marines were sent to me, just in case I needed them for the article. I think they helped to effectively prove my point about how far they've infiltrated the hobby, and I think this is the exception. When you go after a way to bring Nazis and fascist themes, including paint jobs and conversions to a setting that doesn't fit, or have them internally, does show who you are as a player. See, playing a historical war game and begrudgingly putting a swastika on your Messerschmitt BF-109 because it makes it historically accurate, that most people will get behind. Red pauldroning a stand-in for an armband, your space marines, and putting the M42 Stardlehelm, yeah, at that, at that point anyone in the game store or convention who points at you and labels you a Nazi or a fascist, I, I think they're not necessarily wrong. So, I think this concludes this episode. I'm really not sure what else to say at this point. If you liked the episode, please give us a thumbs up, and even more than that, please subscribe and share the video. I feel it would be... I feel it would do more good if you, the viewer, share to increase its reach. But, as always, be well, do well.